The dream of an integrated railway network connecting all six Gulf Cooperation Council GCC countries Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates has been discussed for over a decade. Known as the Gulf Railway, this proposed over 2,000 kilometers rail network running along the coast of the Persian Gulf has the potential to be truly transformative for the region. But is it possible to overcome the many challenges and actually complete such an ambitious infrastructure project spanning multiple countries? Let's find out. There is a strong economic rationale for developing the Gulf Railway. Historical precedents of large-scale railway construction projects in other parts of the world like the US and India in the late 19th century show they had huge economic impacts that greatly outweighed the initial costs. They reduced trading costs, increased shipment volumes, and led to wider economic benefits. The GCC countries hope the railway will have similar effects, creating a faster route for regional trade and exports, and connecting their customs union and common market. It could boost tourism by facilitating passenger travel. Overall, the railway is expected to generate billions in new economic activity for the region by increasing connectivity within the GCC. While the entire GCC railway remains a work in progress, some countries have made more headway than others in starting construction on their sections. The United Emirates and Saudi Arabia are emerging as clear leaders based on their ambitious railway plans and investments. The United Emirates is pouring billions into expanding its rail network over the next decade under a new national program. Saudi Arabia is also investing heavily, with nearly $150 billion committed to transport and logistics projects, including rail. Both countries have successfully completed major rail lines in recent years and are spending more on rail infrastructure annually than other types of construction. Their progress and capacity to finance large projects give hope that at least the connections between the United Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar may become reality. However, the same level of progress is not seen across the entire GCC. Some countries face challenges in completing their parts of the railway on time. Qatar has only recently started early planning, while Bahrain's rail link proposal remains theoretical. Oman scrapped private sector rail projects in 2016 due to economic issues. Kuwait has struggled for over a decade to realize major infrastructure plans, despite attempts at private partnerships. With more limited budgets and track records of building large infrastructure, it is uncertain if these countries can deliver on expectations. Even if the most developed sections are built, the full seamless GCC railway journey may not be possible if all countries do not follow through. Beyond political will, the GC railway faces huge technical and financial hurdles to overcome as well. The difficult desert terrain and sandstorm-prone weather conditions mean rail lines require extra investment and expertise for things like more resilient wheels and fast erosion control. Connecting inner-city networks to emerging urban transport systems within cities is another challenge. Most importantly, rail projects worldwide are almost never financially viable and require constant long-term public subsidies, something not all GCC governments may be prepared to provide. Truly completing the entire 2,000 kilometers network will likely cost over $200 billion, more than the GDP of some GCC countries. Financing such costs and engaging capable private partners will test the capacities of even the richest Gulf monarchies. While an ambitious target, there is growing momentum behind realizing at least parts of the proposed GCC railway within this decade. Train travel within the Gulf will undoubtedly expand significantly in scope and connectivity under the leadership of the United Emirates and Saudi Arabia, who have made significant investments and have experience. Rail links directly connecting some neighboring countries seem increasingly likely to be finished by December 2030 or soon after. However, the railway's full vision of allowing seamless train journeys between the far ends of Kuwait and Oman may still remain an unfulfilled dream if technical and financial difficulties prove too great, or if not all countries can commit long-term as partners. Only time will tell how close the GCC can get to achieving their goal of a unified transnational railway network spanning the entire Gulf region. According to research by The Economist Dave Donaldson, both of these significant rail projects produce substantial economic benefits that far outweighed their initial costs. In the U.S., the new railway lines reduce trading costs within the expanding national market by allowing much faster bulk transportation of goods across long distances via train compared to previous options like wagon roads. This enables greater specialization in production across different regions and the development of new industries able to access wider markets. For the GCC, replicating these types of economic impacts is the goal. 
A railway network would create a faster route for trade between the six member states, lowering trading costs. This could support their goal of forming a customs union and a common market with a free flow of goods. Regional exports would also benefit from more efficient transport access to key ports. The passenger rail services envisioned likewise aim to increase connectivity and tourism within the region by facilitating travel, as seen historically elsewhere. Not all GCC countries have demonstrated the same ability or commitment to making progress on constructing their sections of the proposed Gulf Railway to date. The United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia have clearly emerged as the regional leaders based on the scale of investments and construction underway in their domestic rail sectors. In the United Emirates, the government unveiled a new $13 billion national rail program in late 2021, with the goal of establishing an integrated network connecting 11 major cities by 2030. Massive projects like the $11 billion Etihad Rail Project are advancing to build over 1,200 kilometers of track for freight and passengers, linking key populations and industrial centers across the country. Between 2021 and 2026, the United Emirates is on track to invest well over $5 billion per year in rail infrastructure based on government targets and contractor estimates, far more than any other GCC state and infrastructure type. Saudi Arabia already has the most extensive domestic rail infrastructure in the region, and it continues to expand rapidly. Major achievements include opening the 450-kilometer Jeddah Mecca high-speed line in 2018. Upcoming projects like the $7 to $26 billion coastal link between Red Sea and Gulf ports known as the Land Bridge demonstrate the scale of ambition alongside Chinese partnerships. Saudi targets committing nearly $150 billion to transport projects suggest annual rail infrastructure spending could reach $11 billion by 2025, behind only China globally. Progress is also evident, though nascent, on planned cross-border connections between the more developed rail systems. Once built, these lines would allow passenger and freight movement between countries, critical early progress towards the larger railway vision and key economic benefits. While the United Emirates and Saudi Arabia are emerging at the forefront of rail development, driving future connectivity within the GCC, not all member states are equally equipped or have demonstrated the same ability to deliver on their proposed sections of track to link into the broader network. Some key challenges and uncertainties remain for other countries. Bahrain. The rail link proposal to connect with Saudi Arabia via a major bridge tunnel across shallow waters has been discussed for over a decade with no meaningful movement yet. Previous feasibility studies were reportedly not well received. Oman, an ambitious 2015 memorandum for private sector-led rail projects connecting to the United Emirates was abruptly scrapped in 2016 due to economic headwinds, leaving plans in limbo. Restarting major infrastructure now would require substantial new funding and partnerships. Kuwait, despite over 10 years of stated goals to develop strategic PPP infrastructure models, very few projects have moved past the planning or tendering stages. Executing large cross-border rail projects remains untested. Without the oil wealth and capacity for massive, sustained investments visible in the United Emirates and KSA approaches, it remains far less certain if and when these less developed systems will connect and integrate as envisioned timelines for the GCC Railway's launch. Will the Gulf Railway ever span the entire region? Like, subscribe, and share to follow the progress of this ambitious plan to link the GCC by tracks. The future of this massive infrastructure project remains to be seen. Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video.